All right, put the can down. All right, well, one more second. No, put the second. can down. Okay. All right, all right, Joe, you sing the high part. Oh, you got it. Shoop doo wah, shoop doo wah. Come and eat the family. Talking about my brothers and me. We don't have a pedigree, but we're brothers. Brothers. We might follow different dreams. We might play on different teams. Where it counts behind the scenes, we're brothers. We might march to different drums. We might disagree. Don't you know when trouble comes, you can come to me. You're my family. That life may grow anywhere the wind may blow. Brother, ain't it good to know we're three? Life is full of stress and strife. You lose a lover, or leave a wife. A brother's a brother for all your life. But we're brothers. Shoot to us. Good. Yeah, that's oh, it. No, it's funny. Hey. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Is Donald here? No, but he should be. We're going to the Lipizzana Stallion Show tonight. Since when do you like horses? Oh, geez, you like horses now? <laughs> When's he coming? I have to do an article for my college paper. A person is asking a question here. When is Donald coming? What are you looking for Donald for? Donald's boss is rich, and I want to be, right? Right. <laughs> All his boss does is find authors or interesting people for Donald to work with, right? Right. Have you guys ever heard of Stonehand Walsey? Stonehand Walsey? Let's see, where did I hear that name? He was a boxer. Are you sure? It was a stupid name for a dog. <laughs> Not that kind of boxer, Lou. He was a former heavyweight contender, real colorful character. Well, yesterday, he wandered into Girls, Girls, Girls and Beer looking for a job as a bouncer. We got to talking, and I found out he's interested in having a book written about his life. Get this. He needs someone sharp to help him. Uh, Penny, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm on a roll here, Uncle Cliff. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> no, I, uh, I really think that's a terrific idea. I just don't know if Donald's the right man for the job. Why not? Well, I think a homosexual writer's the right way to go. But let me tell you something. You need a man who can appreciate the sport. Got somebody else in mind? Champ? <laughs> yeah, me. You? You're a baseball player. You ever seen a baseball fight? Looks like two guys trying to put on a tight sweater. Yeah, yeah, but I'm majoring in sports journalism. I'm an athlete. I've got a feel for sports. Look, I love sports, but I'll tell you now, Penny, I love writing about it. I mean, more than I love the sport. Can't you see I'm the right man for the job? Nah. <laughs> Hello, movers and shakers. Hey, it's done. But I'll tell you what. I'll keep you in mind if Donald turns it down. I believe in the backup system. Now, back up. <laughs> back, 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 back. Hi, Donald. Hi, Penny. <laughs> Why are you staring at me? Oh, I'm just trying to picture you in the back of a Rolls Royce with your own chauffeur. Hmm. While you're at it, how about picturing me in the back seat of a Chevy with Don Johnson? <laughs> Look, I know a guy who wants you to write his life story. Are you interested? Who is he? Stonehand Walsey. Ah, some old washed-up boxer. <laughs> oh, not one of my favorite sports, needless to say. Oh, gruesome spectacle. <laughs> On the other hand, it is intriguing. What kind of man is drawn to that life, and why? Hmm, what do you know about this guy? He was born in a refrigerator crate, killed a man when he was seven to save his mother's life. <laughs> He's lived in 47 of the 50 states. He fought in Vietnam. <laughs> he won his first championship when he was 17 years old. He's been married seven and a half times. He has 27 children and a Chrysler. An American car. It's fascinating. And this guy's willing to sell his story? Yes, I told him all about you. He wants to meet and work out the details. 
How about it? What the hey? Sounds interesting. I'll do it. Oh, great. Oh, lordy. Negotiations are a sexy thing. <laughs> Come on, Donna, let's go. You always make me late. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I just don't want to be late. I have to cover this event. I'm in the journalism business, too, you know. Oh, I forgot. Well, let's not keep those stallions waiting. Oh, how long I've waited to say that. <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> All right, but you better be deaf, and you better look like Robert Redford. Hey! I thought you said he was expecting us. Oh, he is, aren't you, Donald? Donald's been up for hours. Truth is, I... I couldn't sleep at all when I heard you were coming. Oh, I sprained my hand. <laughs> Not the stone one. Yeah, those buses think they own the road. Please, have a seat. <clears throat> Make yourself at home. <laughs> May I speak to you for a moment, please? Back in a jiffy. Quit window shopping. We got problems. <laughs> I haven't got Stonehand quite convinced that you're qualified to help him write a book about boxing. You don't have to be a casserole to write a cookbook. <laughs> Watch me dance. It is a pleasure to finally get a chance to meet you, Mr. Walsey, and I want you to know that I think your life story will make a wonderful book. Where am I? You're at Donald Maltby's, the well-known editor. <laughs> What do you know about boxing? <clears throat> Why, I think boxing is an interesting profession for a man to pick, and I'd like us to do some in-depth discussions on that subject in one of the chapters. <laughs> what do you know about boxing? Why, it's probably the greatest sport I know of. That involves hitting people. <laughs> in the head <laughs> till they lose consciousness. Mr. Marby, I've always been a straightforward guy, and I would like for you to be straightforward with me. Do you or don't you like boxing? I think Tennyson said it best when he said, no, I don't. <laughs> Mr. Walsey, Stonehand, I may not be a boxer, but I am good at observing people and helping them communicate their feelings. Uh, sorry, Marby. Now, not, nothing personal, but the guy that helps me write my life needs to understand why they call boxing the sweet science. Do you think you could ever understand that? I'm not sure. Neither am I. See, when I fought, there weren't any million-dollar purses or closed-circuit TVs or fights of the century. Every month, I'd take the train to some beer-stained city and have my own fight of the century. Most of the time, I didn't even know my opponent. Usually some big country boy who saw my face as way off the farm, or some city kid who saw me as a future free from the ghetto. I wasn't fighting men. I was fighting dreams. But among those dreams, there was honor. Two Strangers could wage a war until one man's dream collapsed bloody in a corner. Then that man would rise and, and raise the hand of his opponent as if to say, carry my dream with you. You fought a good fight. Thanks, anyway, Mr. Marby. And, uh, and... Wait, wait, Stoney, uh, Stoney, let's not be so hasty. I have to admit, Donald, I am disappointed in you. I'm sorry, Penny, but I'm serious about my writing. The man had honest questions about my ability to write his book. There are some things you shouldn't lie about. You're right. Those pajamas look like the business end of an airsick bag. 